Alright everyone, how's it going? This is Rexfury here, and welcome to part one of my brand new tutorial series, Anime Studio for Beginners. And, um, I apologize guys, I really did mean to actually get this out a couple days ago, around two days ago or so, but things just came up, and, um, it ended up that I wasn't able to get this out in time. And, to tell you guys the truth, I actually did make a, uh, video that was, uh, going to actually be put out on, uh, Saturday. However, I didn't put that out because I didn't feel that it was right. I didn't really feel like it was, um... I guess good enough to put out and um, I just didn't really like the way it went so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to redo this and um, I'm all refreshed now I'm all better and um, you know I'm all ready to make a video and uh, I guess I'm not all better because I was never sick but you know I'm all nice and refreshed and ready to make a uh, new video now so anyway guys um, I think, you know, I think it's what it was. I just need some rest and, and that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, this is what I'm going to be doing. Um, just pretty much giving you guys a basic look. And let me check something really quick. Okay, okay, never mind. <laughs> just, I just noticed that. I thought there was like two bones there or something. Uh, silly me. Okay. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, as I was saying, um, in this episode, I'm pretty much just going to be teaching you guys the basics of the program. And um, we're not going to be getting to a lot of advanced stuff, like uh, characters, like the one you see here, uh, bones. And, and we're not even going to be getting to some of the simpler stuff either, like just creating basic shapes and colors. No, basically what I want to do in this episode is just kind of focus on the program itself, uh, mainly the interface, and uh, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the term interface, uh, basically just means the program itself and um, kind of all the buttons and such, like uh, here we have the toolbar and here we have the uh, tools palette in which we can use uh, some of these options to create various things such as characters or uh, backgrounds and such, and basically just kind of the whole entire um, layout is a good word, um, would be a... Um, I guess adequate way to describe the, um, um, the, wow, what did I just say? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, forgive me, guys. Um, the interface. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Um, but yeah, basically that's what we're going to be going over today, guys. Some of the simple options and stuff that are available to you. And granted, you can't use all the options at once in Anime Studio. Um, at least not when you start off a new file, which is what we're going to be doing here in just a minute. And so I'm just going to be kind of going over what we can, starting with the toolbar and digressing all the way towards the style palette here, which I'm not, again, not really going to go over. Um, I can't remember if I said that or not, but I'm not really going to be going over this. I'm just going to be going a brief overview of kind of what it does and what it's for, although it's pretty self-explanatory. But uh, nonetheless, guys, that's what we're going to be going over today, and um, don't worry, um, in part two, I'm not going to be going over this huge introduction like I am now, so I just want to kind of let you guys know how this is all going to work, um, at least for the first episode, alright? So with that, let's just go ahead and dig in, I guess, to the tutorial. I wanted to come with something a little more niftier, but um, yeah, oops, I can't believe I forgot to uh, t uh, not really tell you guys that. Um, I guess I really didn't need to, but basically what we're going to be doing here is when you open Anime Studio, this is Anime Studio 6 Pro, by the way, um, I believe the same thing happens with uh, both Debut and um, Anime Studio 5 and possibly before, um, as well as some of the later versions after 6. Um, you'll have a default character like the one that I just had up, and um, you'll have some of the layers and everything, which we're going to go ahead and get to in uh, some later tutorials. But uh, for now, all you want to do is just go File and New or Control N as this little, um, I guess, shortcut uh, guide, or not really guide, but uh, shortcut. Uh, picture, I guess, kind of informs you. Um, you can see all the nice little hotkeys here, and um, that's really nice. Nice thing that Anime Studio does. They give you a lot of um, kind of these shortcuts um, right next to the um, the option here. So when we go ahead and hit New, it will say that we can hit Control plus N. Uh, if you don't always go to file and new every time. And it's the same thing for these options over here in the parentheses. It says E to draw a shape. And um, we'll be getting to that in a little bit here. But uh, yeah, basically you just want to go ahead and hit new to create a new file. And um, basically how Enemy Studio works is this little border here, this purple bluish border, is kind of like a stage in a play. And <clears throat> uh, excuse me, in that um, whatever's inside this stage, um, like say, uh, excuse me, if we were to draw a triangle here. Um, let's go ahead and move that out of the way here. And don't worry about doing this. Um, I'm just going to do this as a quick example. Um, you guys don't have to be uh, doing this currently. But basically, if we were to hit render right now, which rendering, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the term, is basically um, kind of finalizing your animation and getting it ready. Um, for, or basically just getting a glimpse of what it's going to look once all the textures and stuff are on it, and, um, yeah. 
Alright, but anyway, as you can see, um, we only have half of our cube showing, or half of our square showing, rather. And um, if we were to move our whole entire cube in here, and hit render, then we'd see our whole entire cube. Now, this is because the stage right here is... Um, and pretty much whatever's in this stage can um, be shown in the render output, I guess. Um, and whatever's out of the stage cannot be shown, but it will still be in your animation at the same time. Um, so we'll get into this um, down the road, so don't worry about that. Go ahead and delete that. Alright, so let's go ahead and start off by um, kind of going over the uh, toolbar here. So, as you can see, we have File, Edit, Draw, Bone, etc, 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 or etc. Wow, that's how it really odd but uh, nonetheless pretty much for file um, you should know most of this um, all of this should be pretty self-explanatory new obviously it creates a new file open open to file that you've already created um, open recent is um, as you see I have some of the stuff here that I've recently uh, worked on and um, basically it just kind of opens up um, projects that you've had open before pr or previously and close will close your current project and uh, save save as um, there's a difference between these two and if you guys don't know the difference between those you guys should definitely look those up but basically saving is um, just kind of saving a file and saving as is saving a file as well basically just to kind of shorten this up it's kind of like a customizable um, save so um, yeah you guys should if you guys don't know what the, the difference between save and save as is um, I would recommend looking that up uh, but anyway project settings uh, we're not really going to be getting into this a whole lot but we will possibly enter a little bit of it later kind of do stuff in there um, then we have import and um, again, we're going to be exploring all this stuff later, um, but we have a pretty big list of stuff that we can import here, and uh, that's pretty cool, um, but we're not going to go over that just yet. Uh, preview is pretty much the render, um, although I believe up here somewhere, um, at least I thought there was another option to render. Huh. Okay, maybe there's not. Anyway, um, yeah, it's pretty much render, um, which is control R, which is what I was hitting before. And uh, export animation is uh, when you're done with the animation, you go ahead and export it as uh, different files. Again, we're going to be getting to that later. Uh, upload to YouTube, batch export, and um, quit. So that kind of just quits the program. And so we're going to be getting to uh, some of this other stuff later in the tutorial series. But let's go ahead and go to edit now. So edit has some, again, pretty self explanatory things that you guys should know of already undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, clear, select all select none and um, all this stuff that you guys should pretty much be familiar with and have a basic idea of uh, what it does because it's all pretty much self-explanatory all right and the draw here um, the drawing is going to basically or basically be used for um, some more I guess more editing rather than anything um, and um, it will kind of change the perspective of objects and we'll see what that does later down the road with uh, some other shapes and stuff Alright, now on to the bone. Um, I'm not really going to go over any of this right now um, because even if I do, it's going to kind of be hard for you guys to under or understand um, what I'm explaining here because this is kind of complicated stuff. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get into this um, on the advanced portion of the series. Alright, so animation. Um, we're not going to be spending too much time in here because pretty much um, all of this stuff can pretty much be done down here in the animation sequencer. So, I mean, once in a while I might go up here just kind of show you guys um, how to uh, I guess use stuff up here rather than down here um, but for the most part everything's gonna be done down here scripts um, I haven't really got into scripts myself um, I might go over them though just briefly just kind of show you guys what they do um, but for the most part I'm not gonna be spending time in here because I myself haven't really spent a lot of time in here um, so yeah that is that. Um, view, again, just like the animation tab over here, the view tab, um, we're not really going to be using a whole lot um, because, I mean, pretty much the show output only is the only thing we're really going to be using, and possibly the select tracing image, um, but for the most part, we're not really going to be using this um, stuff up here. Alright, and window. Um, Windows is pretty cool. I, I like this option. Um, for those of you who have ever used uh, something like Photoshop or GIMP, um, it's kind of similar to those in that, see over here how we have the layers palette? Now, let's say that we didn't really want the layers palette over there, we wanted it somewhere over here, and um, so, I don't know, I guess so we would have it over here, and um, we could also extend this animation sequencer over a little bit so we can kind of uh, get a better glimpse of uh, what all we're dealing with. So to do that, we go window, and hit layers. And notice we have a check mark next to layers when we have uh, layers selected um, as a uh, separate window. 
So that basically means that we can kind of uh, move it around now wherever we want. It's detached, and um, the animation signature you'll also notice is um, kind of extended out to uh, where the layers um, window was. So that's a pretty neat feature. I never really use it myself because personally everything is uh, kind of in proportion uh, where I like it, so it doesn't really bother me much. So I pretty much keep everything in its default position. So let's go ahead and hit layers again, and you'll notice when you do that, it goes right back to its uh, original place, and um, nothing really gets distorted or anything like that, and uh, it's pretty much just back to where it was. So it's pretty, I guess it's kind of like undoing it or toggling it on and off, um, is kind of how I like to think about it. Alright, and finally the help tab. So again, really self-explanatory, um, just a whole bunch of tutorials and um, just kind of information on the program pretty easy stuff, and um, just in case you guys are wondering, the library over here um, is pretty much just a whole um, range of objects in which we can use for our projects, but we're going to go ahead and get um, to this a lot later in the tutorial. Well, actually, maybe not really a lot later, but um, pretty much it's it's not going to be um, appearing in any of the uh, upcoming episodes uh, soon. So let's go ahead and head down here to the tools subsection, or rather to the tools subsection, or the tools section, jeez, um, and then kind of explore the subsections within this section. Alright, so basically, um, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that isn't really available to us right now, and that's because we haven't created an object. And we're going to go ahead and do that in the uh, next tutorial, so we're going to kind of get into uh, some of this stuff possibly in the next tutorial. Um, but for the most part, we're just going to be going over these styles uh, palette here, but we will be getting into some of these options in the next tutorial. Um, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and go over these. Um, right here is the select point or hockey G and um, this is going to be used to kind of morph or uh, manipulate uh, points and such in our objects and don't worry if you don't understand what that means now um, because we will be exploring it later. Alright, and the add points button here, or hotkey A, is basically what we're going to be using to create some custom characters and uh, objects and stuff like that. And basically you do that like um, this here. So as you can see we've created a simple shape here, and a um, simple piece of geometry. And um, basically you can kind of manipulate these points around, and um, we're going to be exploring um, kind of how to use this feature and create our own characters and objects and such later, so that should be a pretty fun portion of the uh, tutorial series, I'm really looking forward to that. Let's go ahead and delete that though for now. And the draw points here, well free, uh, free hand rather, um, I love to call it draw points, I have no idea why, but maybe it's kind of just because if you use it you kind of draw points out and stuff. And uh, we're not really going to be using this a whole lot, um, only because it kind of takes up um, a lot of space and um, it kind of creates unnecessary points. Um, so, yeah. Um, but we will explore it regardless and kind of what it does. Um, but it's pretty similar to the add points button. Alright, and now to the draw shape. We um, kind of went over this a little earlier. It's the hotkey E. Um, and basically, we can just pretty much do what it says um, we can do, which is draw shapes. And when you click on it, you'll notice that we have a whole bunch of options up here. And um, now that we've created a shape, we have all these options open to us now. So that's pretty much what I meant about the um, kind of using shapes to get access to other objects. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this though. Alright, and up here you'll notice that there's an autofill and an auto stroke. We're going to be going over what those do uh, later in the tutorial. Um, at least not this tutorial, but the tutorial series rather. Um, so, yeah, that's that. And finally, over here in the draw subsection, um, th we have the scatter brush tool. So, the scatter brush tool is actually a really neat option and um, really neat tool to kind of use. And um, basically, what you could do here is you have a little option of uh, different kind of brushes to use. So, we have bubbles, leaves, letters, smoke, and stars. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and choose leaves here. And if we just kind of click and drag everywhere, you'll notice that it creates these little objects here. And, um, oops, that isn't leaves. What am I saying? Um, there's leaves. Okay, so let me go ahead and undo that really quick. Oh, delete. Okay. Go ahead and just draw a little line there, and there's our leaves. And you'll notice that the shapes are pretty simple right now, but when we render them, they have kind of a bit of a... Um, actually, I don't think this is a really good example. Let me go ahead and delete that really quick. Um, let's go to smoke. To give you guys a better example of what this does. So as you can see, we have some pretty simple shapes here, uh, various colors um, and other shapes, and when we render these, they're all nice and kind of smoky and have a nice little, um, I guess, blur to them. And we're going to be going over how to actually do these later on in the tutorial, so that should be pretty fun. 
Okay, now on to the full, uh, fill subsection here, sorry. Um, right now we only have access to the eyedropper, and I actually think I'm going to go ahead and skip this, as well as the bone subsection, because we can't really do anything in these um, for now, so let's go ahead and head on to the layer subsection here. Alright, so for the layer subsection, it's pretty exactly what it sounds like. Um, say over here we have a layer 1, well we do have a layer 1, um, but in this layer 1, let's say that we have a star. Alright, and let's say in this star we have a little face here. <laughs> a very poorly drawn face, I, I uh, might add. Now, basically, let's say that we wanted to move this star, um, as well as its face, all the way over to this side. Now, we could just move each object individually, however, this can get kind of messy, and chances are we wouldn't really get it back to where it originally was, everything back into uh, its original place. So, to do that, to basically move everything, um, instead of just kind of uh, individually manipulating everything, we could just go ahead and go uh, translate layer here, and just kind of move it as a whole. So that's really cool, and um, as you can see, like just just from this one example, um, how powerful layers are going to be later on, and um, what they uh, can basically be capable of. So layers are a really cool, and, or a really fun tool rather, and um, yeah, they're they're pretty expansive. And uh, basically, this layer tab over here, subsection, is basically going to be used to kind of um, help manipulate those layers. All right, so let's go ahead and just delete all this really quick. There we go. And all this stuff we're going to be going over later as well, so I'm not really going to bother going over it right now. Alright, so let's head down to the camera subsection here. So the camera subsection is pretty much how it sounds. It just kind of moves the camera around, and it's kind of hard to tell exactly what it does right now. But later on, we start using it more. You guys will get a bigger, uh, better idea, rather, of what it does. Alright, now to the workspace layer. Um, the workspace layer is pretty much just kind of how to, um, I guess, manipulate the workspace view. And keep in mind, this actually doesn't change how um, the objects that you create are actually kind of facing and such. It only creates, um, or rather only changes, the way that you're looking at the objects. So let's say that we actually kind of move this over a little bit and we accidentally, um, I don't know, we did something like um, kind of orbit around here. And let's say we kind of mess everything up and we want to get back. So how do we do that? Well, Control Z doesn't work, and Undo only does um, things that we do, uh, creating our, with our objects and such. So to kind of undo that and get back to our default view, we just go ahead up here and hit Reset View, and there we go. We're right back where we started. So that's pretty neat and um, pretty cool. Um, very easy to use, and um, I'm glad they put this little Reset View here thing, um, or rather, rather Reset View button thing here. Um, to kind of be able to do that. Okay, so that is that. Now let's go ahead and move down here to our uh, animation sequencer. So we can't really do a lot in here right now, um, so I'm only going to go over some of the basic things that you can do here. Um, now, <clears throat> excuse me, geez, I <laughs> had like a little air pocket in there. It's kind of, anyway, um, basically what we can do here is um, these pause buttons here, rather these uh, play, stop, and rewind such buttons are going to be used when we actually have an animation down here and we have keyframes and such and we can play out our animation and um, kind of go through all the stuff and um, if we want to rewind it, uh, we just go hit rewind or I guess, let me see here. There we go. So that kind of, I guess, goes back, and then we can kind of do that to kind of get back to where we were. Um, so that's that. Um, we're going to be getting a better handle on this later on, so don't worry about that. And, um, let's see, these are just the frame settings. Um, I'm not going to go over these right now, just because they're kind of uh, inadequate for what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and just skip over here. Again, um, this kind of ties in with all this stuff, the animation portion of this. So I'm going to go over to the next set of options. Now, these are the window options. These are pretty cool. Um, these are actually somewhat similar to 3D animation programs, which, for those of you guys who don't know, Enemy Studio is also capable of uh, 3D animations as well. However, it's more of kind of a mix in with 2D thing so it's not a full on set of uh, 3D animation tools but rather something to just kind of uh, get some basic 3D um, effects in there along with your 2D animation alright and basically what these do is if you click one of these as you can see it kind of uh, changes the way the windows work and um, if you hit the or click the middle of these or all these windows I guess and drag them around 
um, you'll notice that it changes the sizing of each window so maybe if you want to work more in one window than the others but still kind of see what's going on in the other windows you can go ahead and do that and um, you can also change the views of each window and this gets more into kind of 3d work um, for anime studio so we're not really going to be using this a whole lot um, because again I haven't really gotten to the 3d portion too much of this program um, so yeah Alright, and over here, I haven't really, I mean, you don't really want to touch these things too much because, like, personally, I tend to never really use them. I mean, this just kind of shows the pivot point and such. Um, display quality, um, nothing really too special to do here. Of course, you can turn on wireframe and stuff like that, but we don't really need to get um, too involved in that. Alright, and um, now we're up to the styles palette here. I'm, I apologize if uh, I'm going kind of slow here, guys. I just want to make sure that uh, this all kind of is understandable to you guys because the last thing I want um, people to do or have problems with is uh, have kind of problems with following the tutorial. Um, you know, when I say, go ahead and go to your translate layers tool, and you know, no one will know where that is. So I want to just kind of get you guys familiar with the program and uh, able to kind of maneuver around it with ease. So hopefully you guys will be able to do that after this tutorial somewhat. But uh, anyway, nonetheless, on the styles palette here. Basically what the styles palette is for is changing up the colors, adding textures, and um, some effects and stuff. I guess not really effects, but um, well yeah, I guess some kind of effects on your uh, animations and such. So that's pretty much what that's for. Um, just kind of the basic um, color work and uh, cool stuff like that um, to your drawing slash characters. So that's pretty much what that's for. And um, other than that guys, that's pretty much it. The layers palette down here is um, something that I don't really want to get into just yet. So we're going to go ahead and get into that later later on. So don't worry about getting into that just yet. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial guys. Um, again, I apologize for it um, being being, you know pretty long um, but you know that's just kind of how it went I guess hopefully the future tutorials won't be as long but I guess we'll see what happens um, but yeah I'll definitely try to uh, kind of cut down the time if I can um, so yeah guys this has been Rex Furry hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial feel free to comment and rate uh, this video and uh, as always feel free to subscribe to my channel um, for upcoming updates on new videos and such and um, <clears throat> I apologize for stuttering and stuff a couple times during this tutorial. I had some, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of had like a little bit of a cough, I guess, in my throat. So I kind of, uh, <laughs> I guess, mixed that in with what I was saying. But nonetheless, guys, um, I guess this has been Rex Furry again. And I'll see you all next video.